Hi guys, welcome to this short video on AKT revision, in particular graphs in the statistics part of it. Why are videos specifically on graphs? Three reasons really. Number one, when I prepared for this exam, I hated graphs. I didn't understand them and I realised there's quite a lot of you guys out there who are in the same boat. Number two, we get asked a lot about these graphs and these, these cases at our courses. So if people say, why can't I make a video on graphs? So we're doing it for you guys. And number three, we did a few social media polls recently on our Twitter and Facebook pages and graphs seem to be the one thing that people needed when it came to AKT revision videos. So that's why. I'm, I'm, in, I'm a GP and an educator based in the West Midlands and this video is all about making you understand the key principles about the various types of graphs. We can't answer every question about them, but if you understand the key principles about what these graphs are all about, when the questions come, it makes it that much easier to get the correct answer on the big day when you're stressed. So let's get started. So the first we're going to look at is simple stuff, scatter plots. Now these are all about looking for correlation of results. So if you get a number of set of values, you plot them on a graph, you look and see is it a positive correlation, is there a negative correlation, or is there just no correlation at all? So let's have a look at a couple of examples. So if you start with the first one, you've got height against weight here. And you can see there's lots of little dots plotted, so you plot them on your, on your axis, and you look for what we call a line of best fit. You try and draw a line to see if there is one. So in this case, it's going from bottom left to top right. So that's what you call a positive correlation. As one gets bigger, the other gets bigger as well. Now you might get the opposite, negative correlation. Start off at the top left, end up in the bottom right. So as one gets bigger, the other gets smaller. So in this example, you've got inhaler use. So the amount of times people use a blue inhaler in asthmatics versus their peak exposure flow rate. So as you expect, the more they use their blue inhaler, the lower their peak flow gets. So there's a negative correlation. So scatter plot is simply about putting a number of different plots on an axis and looking to see what that correlation is, if there is one, nice and simple. So the next thing to look at are box plots. Now box plots are a really simple way of looking at the variation of various sets of data, for example in three separate studies. So if you look here, we've got three individual studies and they've all been looking at the effect of a drug on reducing the amount of cholesterol. Now, if you've got the results skewed across here, you can see that they're all as three separate boxes with what we call whiskers either side. Now, what do these represent? Very simply, if you look at the box, the middle part of each box, the middle line, represents the median value of that study. So the median number of dropping cholesterol in that particular uh, experiment or trial. The top and the bottom parts of the individual boxes look at the first and the third quartile when it comes to the results. So you're looking at the variation of spread. And if you have whiskers added to the top and bottom, they're not always there, but these can represent different things, but most commonly it's the maximum value in the study and the minimum value in the study. So it shows you usually what the outliers can be, but the reason you focus more on the box is that you get rid of those outliers and you're looking at the results between the first and the third quartile, which can be much more representative of what we're looking for when we're looking at clinical trials and studies. And the other thing that's worth looking at box plots is how big that variation is. So in this study, for example, you can see that the results were uh, over a larger area of variation, whereas in the third study, you can see the results are much more compacted um, around the median value. So it's sometimes useful to look at that range and look at that spread. But that's all a box plot is. So hopefully, if it comes up in the exam, you know exactly what they are and how they can help. So the next thing we look at is a forest plot. Now a forest plot is just simply a graphical representation of a meta-analysis. And if you remember back to our previous stats video, a meta-analysis is just a statistical look at a various number of studies all looking at the same particular thing. So this is just a way of putting it on paper. So this is an example, I'll go back to our cholesterol one. So in this case, you've got four different studies all looking at the effect of a drug on the reduction in cholesterol. So you have your reduction or change in cholesterol on the bottom level here. So the first thing to look at is the individual studies and the size of the boxes. So the size of the boxes represents the size of the study. So in this example, you can see that study two was by far the biggest study in terms of results or number of participants or however you may look at it. The one additional thing you get in a forest plot that you don't, for example, get in a box plot is an average or outcome of all of those studies put together. So that's where the diamond comes in. So that when you look at the diamond, that's telling you what the overall mean result was for all of the studies. So in this case, you can see there's a mean drop in cholesterol of minus one across all those four studies. Whereas individually, you can see that, for example, study three showed that the mean cholesterol for that study actually was the wrong side of zero, it went up in that case. 
And you can see that in study four, that's the study that probably showed the most overall reduction in cholesterol, just over minus two. So when you put them all together, you look at the diamond, and that tells you that overall the mean was about minus one for that particular drug across these trials. And the other thing to look at with the diamond is where it crosses it. If it crosses the zero mark, then it's not statistically significant. Whereas in this case, the diamond doesn't cross that zero mark, and therefore you can say it's a statistically significant result when you look at it on graphical representation. So with the forest plot, it's all about that, looking at that graphical representation of a meta-analysis. So look at the individual, also one other thing I didn't mention, the confidence interval. These lines that go through the squares here, they're looking at the confidence interval. And if you remember from our previous stats video what a confidence interval is, it's the range of results where you can be confidently, we can be confident that the true value lies between. So it's important to look at how big those are. And like we talked about in the previous video, the shorter the confidence interval, the better. And sometimes you get a confidence interval going through the diamond as well. So it's important to pay attention to that. But hopefully that demystifies Freud's plots a little bit. And when it comes up in questions, again, if you understand the principles as to what these things are, it can help in getting the right answer. Next, we're going to look at funnel plots. Now, very simply, funnel plots are just a scattergram of a number of different results. So a scattergram of things like a meta-analysis, for example. And the idea behind a funnel plot is to look for things like publication bias. And that all depends on the skew of the results. So that what you do is you plot lots of different results and trials across this picture. That's what all these dots represent. And you look to see, is there a nice funnel shape of the results? Now, if there is a nice funnel shape, like in this case, then you can say you're pretty confident there's no publication bias going on. But if you get a skewed set of results and they don't follow that particular pattern, then you have the element of doubt of publication bias when it comes to looking at these results. So essentially, it's just a scatter graph of looking at results from a meta-analysis and looking to see what that distribution is. And the idea is that if you have a nice distribution, the, tr the larger trials all tend to be nearer the average, whereas the smaller trials tend to be the ones that are the outliers. But overall, that shape is preserved. So if you get a funnel plot and you get a question that looks like a funnel plot, just look at that distribution. Is it a nice, even distribution or is it skewed? And therefore, you can start to make those calls about publication bias. So guys, I hope that was of some value to you. Hopefully it's giving you those key principles to understand those common four types of graphical representation. Scatter plots, box plots, forest plots, and funnel plots. Now clearly we can't go into all the details of the different ways that you can write questions about that. There's lots of different ways to spin that information. We do go over a lot of questions for graphs at our AKT mock courses if you're interested. But if you have any other queries that you want us to do for our AKT preparation or CSA preparation, please do get in touch, drop me a tweet, drop me an email. We do have our other previous statistics video that goes over some of the other things that come up quite frequently in terms of AKT and stats. But if you are taking the exam in the next couple of months, good luck, I'm sure you'll be great. Take care.